hi guys thanks for watching this video um, I've decided to move all my electronics from my CNC machine into an enclosure hence this video and the reason for that is currently it sits in a wooden drawer and all the material I machine tends to make it into the drawer which as you can imagine is not great for the electronics um, I've got this enclosure all set up where in which I've got my X axis so my X servo driver over here which is about a thousand watt motor on there sitting in this corner I've got a Y axis servo driver over here which is about 750 watts and then this servo driver actually controls my spindle motor which is going to be a 1.8 kilowatt servo um, I've got a closed loop stepper motor which controls my Z axis and a 48 volt power supply to go with that and then I've also got a UC CNC motion control board which basically generates all the signals for the relevant drives and then um, I've got a custom made breakout board which I might do a video on because I'm going to actually change this going to be changed from this board to a more like advanced breakout board that I'm actually currently designing with like optocouplers and differential line drivers etc etc so maybe I can go into that but the idea is it's going to be plug and play with the UCNC board so it can interface with the server motors, stepper drivers etc etc uh, as for the actual enclosure itself um, that is going to be made out of primarily aluminium with a perspex top what we're going to do is we're going to manufacture everything or mill everything out on the mill so all of these pieces over here they're going to be milled out the back plates going to be milled out of aluminium um, and then all of these side parts which are about 2 mil 1050 series aluminium they're going to be milled out and then the idea is to bend them in shape so I'm going to have a wooden form sitting on each corner and then I'm going to stack the actual braces effectively I'm going to bolt them together and stack them on top of this wooden form and then bend this aluminium in stitchy. So I'm a bit skeptical how well this is going to work, but we'll give it a go and find out. But yeah, that's that. So um, I've got some fans at the bottom over here to prevent some, you know, to help with cooling and some vents at the top to actually draw in some air and uh, a fancy logo at the front. Happy days. So let's go over to the milk. So my intention over here is to use a piece of chipboard and then use some sticky tape on this once this is milled flat to hold the aluminium in place. In hindsight using chipboard is quite a poor choice. It just gets saturated with the coolant, doesn't stick well to the sticky tape and causes me a world of pain later on. So if you've got chipboard, chuck it away, use something else, don't bother with this. So the aluminium grade over here is 1000 series and my idea or my intention here is to go in deep and to do it slowly. So what actually ends up happening is the chips when they're formed actually ends up welding to the colour and then adhering to the material and this causes a bit of, well it just causes poor surface finish and eventually causes the cutter to jam up and stop. So I tried a couple of feed rates to sort this out, many 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 attempts and I could not crack it. The only time I cracked it, which I've got off camera because I got frustrated when I was doing this, very frustrated, was when I took smaller passes very, very fast. And uh, I mean, at the moment I'm running my router a little slower than it could do, and that's simply because I don't have the right breakout ball and I can't run a higher kernel speed. But I think I'm using around 5 meters a minute, 
and then I'm going at about 0.2 millimeters. That's what seems to work. I did have a funny failure, which you're going to see now, when which the colour just stopped working and the workpiece carried on moving. And this was for me the time to stop. This was it. I got fed up, stopped filming, but I did actually finish these parts. So the next operation is me showing you some of the chamfer and all that's going on here. So I'm opting to still use the sticky tape in this scenario. Um, I'm using some dowel pins which will help my situation somewhat but the dowel pins are really like, enable me to flip that actual part over and then do a milling operation on the other side without losing my location. Um, I'm plucking the edge of the stuck up simply because there's not a lot of room between the edge of the stuck and then where my parts actually fit, they're actually nested quite tightly. So um, I was quite surprised that actually I managed to line up the part relatively well first time. So I'm using um, a center drill over here, so I'm just going to center drill these all out. And then what I do is I come in with a 4mm draw bit and then I finish off with a 5mm draw bit. I'm actually using a pecking cycle with the drills, but the pecking cycle is poorly, um, poorly programmed. I should have probably pecked a little bit more aggressively, so um, it doesn't really clear the chips very well. Nevertheless, that pecking cycle is still better than plunging straight into the pie itself. It does help with a bit of chip clearance, so that's all good there. Um, the router itself is not really designed to actually do much drilling. It's not very stiff in that regards. I'm going for a center drill operation and what you're going to see in a bit is me breaking the center drill simply because I forgot to program it to go back up again. So yeah, it's a long day at this point. But here, here I am trying to flip the part so here I'm ready for the next milling operation on the other side.
do the braces themselves and made of a 5000 series aluminium alloy. Um, the cam data says it's supposed to be about a 2 mil depth pass at about a metre per minute, but in actual reality I'm probably doing about 0.2 depth of cut and um, maybe 3 to 5 metres per minute. I normally go for a helical ramp in, as you've probably seen. Um, it kind of like helps with the cutter, I think it's less harsh on the cutter. Also, since changing to servos and look, making the look ahead in Mac 3 much, much higher, I think um, the helical pattern works well for me. Um, over here I'm doing the base plate. So the base plate is made of a thousand series aluminium alloy, so it's actually really gummy. Uh, I have quite a lot of issues machining it. I'm machining it with tabs here. But the work holding is quite bad, and I'll probably talk about that later on. But um, it's simply because areas of the part are high, some areas are low, so the actual depth of cut just changes all the way through it. But nevertheless, this part actually came out alright. So, after finishing parts. Um, I don't think they're the best parts I've ever produced. Definitely have produced better parts in the past. Um, the biggest problem is work holding. I need to find better ways of work holding these parts. I mean you can see, I mean some of the walls have got almost like a, it's where the chips effectively weren't cleared and they've welded themselves to the actual surface. So um, I need to find a better way of actually getting rid of the chips when I cut in. I also need to find a better way of actually preventing the part from like lifting. So you saw me doing some like like double sided, you know, sticky tape and putting the super glue on that. That actually worked really well, but obviously I only did that to the last pass rather than the first side. So when I did the first pass or the, the first cut on the first side, the whole part, the whole stock material just lifted up. So I got problems where in which certain areas like over here and over here are like different dimensions especially on like the longer ones the longer ones this is a bit of more of a problem because obviously here it's sitting upwards and this part over here was like clamped down so definitely problems there um i mean to be honest the surface finish i think if i actually clamp these down well i think the surface finish would be like really really good but um yeah you can you can see there's like a i'm not sure how well the camera is picking this up but like on the on the parts it's like a faint line going across it it's barely barely um feelable you can't you can't really feel it very much but the reason why that is is because these parts when they're actually you know finally cut and when this profile mill was actually performed they were they were sitting down on the, on the actual bed and then they um they didn't have a lot of support material, I didn't really include any tabs. I was just really relying on the fact that the sticky tape and um, the work holding provided by the sticky tape was strong enough to keep them in place, which was stupid. I mean, in hindsight, I should have done something different. So, um, yeah, it would be nice to know what you guys think in terms of work holding. I mean, I think if I were doing it again, I wouldn't do the final operation in this like orientation. I would. Uh, flip it over and do it in this orientation so the cutter comes along and does this rather than the cutter coming along and doing this because I think that's the reason why I just didn't have enough contact area to actually stick it down and obviously not use a chipboard the chipboard was a big mistake so yeah the other parts well this is definitely the worst of the worst I mean chamfer operations as I rightfully said before they require the part to be absolutely flat with the bed this obviously wasn't so there's some areas where in which I've got good chamfers there's some areas where in which I've got no chamfers so uh, yep there's hardly anything there however over here loads you probably can't see very well with the camera but take my word for it this looks crap so um I've got this, and I think I'm going to use these two as like a, like a, like an exercise, effectively, because I'm still skeptical whether the actual thing or these material is going to really bend the way that I want it. I mean, it might bend to shape, whether it'll bend to shape and look great, I don't know. So, um, yeah. The tab idea on this was actually probably a good idea. I think I'm going to continue doing that. But it'd be really interesting to know what you guys do in terms of like holding flat stock pieces down. Because if I clamp this around all sides, um, I reckon if I had any operations in the future when which I had to do in the center, like maybe, I don't know, a circle or pocket or whatever, I'd have problems because it just it's just not flat. So, yeah.
It'll be interesting to know what you guys do, preferably uh, without a vacuum table, because I ain't going to make one of those. So the next stage, drill these all up, then a countersink some holes, tap everything, and then uh, going to make the wooden forms for the sides so I can actually bend the material over with, and then um, assembling everything, fun times. <laughs>